From the beginning of our efforts in 2008 to help businesses successfully use social media, we've used Mayberry as a perfect metaphor for the new small town economy. Welcome to Monetizing Mayberry. I'm Mark Bortz, the founder of Mayberry, and this is Matt Cost, our digital marketing director. Digital marketing is much like Mayberry. Instead of pushing out a brand message through broadcast media, businesses pull customers in by building relationships and inspiring brand advocates. We've developed this series entitled Monetizing Mayberry to walk you through the steps to leveraging the digital marketing platforms and grow your business. Our ultimate goal is to see your organization profit from using social media. These 10 chapters build upon each other to prepare you for realizing real results on the path to success with digital marketing. If you're joining us for the first time, we encourage you to start from chapter one. We hope you enjoy. Anytime we at Mayberry encourage a business owner to get involved in social media marketing, inevitably one of the first questions we get is, but what do I say? You know, it's understandable why a business person would immediately think about talking points when it comes to promoting a product or a service. When it comes to traditional marketing, business people think in terms of billboards, television commercials, newspaper ads, even your 30-second elevator pitch. To communicate through these media, the only thing you need is a message. You simply broadcast the message, then you sit back and wait for the sales to come in. Social media has changed the game. To market your product in the digital age, or the new small town economy, as we refer to it, the first thing you'll want to do is to listen to your audience. Sheriff Andy Taylor and his trusty deputy Barney Fife had to keep their ears to the street in Mayberry. You know, if a crime was committed or it was in progress, they needed to find out quickly in order to catch the bad guy. Identifying when and where the action was required Andy and Barney to employ multiple channels of communication. They needed tools to help them monitor the criminal activity in Mayberry and throughout the county. The first and most obvious tool they used was the early version of the telephone. If someone in town needed to report a crime, all they had to do was dial up Sarah, the operator, and have her connect them right through to the sheriff's office. Of course, the phone would do no good if there was no one there to answer it. So someone always had to be responsible for sitting in the office in case of an emergency call. However, Sheriff Andy Taylor didn't just sit behind a desk. He often went out on patrol to monitor the safety of his citizens in Mayberry. On one particular episode, a cigar butt sparked a fire over at Wally's filling station, all while Gomer was sleeping on the job. Andy discovered the fire while out on patrol and saved Gomer's life. Andy and Barney have a police radio as well, so they can be reached while they're out and about. It's just one more way for them to communicate and to monitor the activity that's happening in and around Mayberry. Even simple conversation in town helps keep them aware of possible threats to Mayberry. While sitting in Floyd's barber shop, they might hear news of an escaped convict just one town away who may be headed in their direction. Or they might learn someone from the FBI is in town on very special assignment. In the same way that Andy and Barney monitor what's happening in Mayberry, you must monitor what's being said in your community. The social media channels offer businesses the ability to hear what's being said about their industry, their market, their brand, and each of their products and services like never before. Network tools give businesses access to real-time conversation happening online. Before you begin talking to your audience, you need to first learn a bit about them. Where do they prefer to communicate? 
What does your audience, your online audience, look like demographically? What brands do they already engage with? Which products or services do they communicate most positively about? And which ones receive negative response? Customers are not likely to communicate directly to your business online, especially if it's negative. Surveys and focus groups and comment cards can be helpful, but remember, in the social networks, most people aren't talking to you. They're talking to their friends. Sometimes, though, they're talking about you. In order to hear what they're saying, businesses must be engaged in the same networks that their target audiences are using. The first place to start is the direct line. Just as Andy and Barney manned the sheriff's station phone to stay alert to incoming calls for help, your business must, be, must stay alert for incoming communications through the networks. Comments and questions on Facebook, mentions on Twitter, should be viewed just as you would view a phone call from a customer to your office. For an increasing number of users, social media is the preferred method to communicate with your business. They're not going to call you to get their question answered or deliver their comment to you. These customers and prospects expect you to respond via Twitter or Facebook. Setting up notifications in the networks to alert you when new communication comes in allows your business to respond quickly and a quick response is what customers are looking for. When Sheriff Taylor was patrolling near Wally's filling station he discovered Gomer asleep and he saw the flames rising from the cigar set on some grease rags. He saved Gomer. As a business person in the social networks you don't want to sit back and wait either. You want to find the flames and put them out before they become full-blown fires. You want to be the first to thank your customers for choosing your products and recommending your services to others. You also want to find out what customers are saying to their friends about your products. And you definitely want to know when a prospect is looking for buying advice. One client of ours, a home service contractor, was a member of several local online neighborhood groups. Generally, these groups are very active and you'll find hundreds of homeowners conversing about various issues and asking each other for recommendations on garden flowers, babysitters, and dog groomers. In one particular post, a homeowner who was looking to have a major home repair asked for a referral for a contractor. An employee of our client who regularly participated in this neighborhood group saw the post and responded with a ringing endorsement for his employer and with a telephone number. Within an hour of the post showing up on Facebook, a service call had been scheduled. This particular lead turned into a job worth more than $10,000. Now, stories like this are commonplace among clients who are active listeners in the networks. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest all allow you to search for specific keywords and phrases using hashtags. Those search results can tell you exactly what millions of users all over the world are saying right this second about the keyword you're looking for. Before social networks, you could only get this information through the Patriot Act. To go a step further, you can actually narrow those results to show only what users near you are saying. Imagine what opportunities could develop from seeing what everyone in your area is saying about leadership, or banking, or graphic design, or guitar strings. Not only can you generate leads and design products based on your prospects' needs, but you can begin to adapt your business's message to meet the specific needs of your market. And this is where you begin cultivating material for generating content for your posts. Credit card giant MasterCard placed such high value 
on the information gained from social networks, they built a conversation suite at their worldwide corporate headquarters. The suite features a 40 foot wide LED screen that displays any mention of the brand in postings from 43 countries, 26 languages, 24 hours a day. Among other functions, it keeps score where MasterCard stands in social media conversations relating to credit cards. If your posts mention MasterCard, the company's listening machine is going to snag it, as long as it's not password protected. There are many monitoring tools available for your business, and many of them are free. With a little research, you can narrow down the most helpful ones. The easiest place to start is your home feed in the social network. Following relevant people and pages on networks like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Following these pages can bring a wealth of timely information right to your feet. Other tools like Google Alerts will scan the web for particular search terms and compile the results right there in your inbox. The information you acquire from listening to your networks should guide every marketing message you create. Instead of talking about the weather and traffic on Facebook, you can create blogs and posts answering frequently asked questions, addressing concerns, and sharing customer success stories. And instead of shouting from the newspaper, TV, or radio to anyone who will listen, you're targeting specific influential users who are already talking about your brand. Like Sheriff Taylor, in order to find these content sources and key influencers, you must be listening monitoring, and patrolling the neighborhoods. Thank you for tuning in to Monetizing Mayberry. We hope you're not only learning what digital marketing is, but how it can benefit your business's bottom line. Over the next several chapters of this series, we'll continue to unpack the principles of Mayberry. These principles will provide you both the education and the application necessary to understand and implement a successful digital communication strategy for your business. A strategy that will help you make money. Both Matt and I will lead you through the matrix of understanding, designing, developing, managing, and implementing. We believe that with the right elements, you will succeed and you'll gain real benefit from your efforts. If you're an owner, or a C-level executive, I certainly encourage you to make your way through the entire series. It's critical that you understand and you support those that you have empowered to be social on your behalf. If you're a marketing administrator, you'll absolutely want to attend every step of the way and be taking notes. We'll be providing you foundational building blocks, strategic concepts, and practical applications in every session. Join us again for the next chapter of Monetizing Mayberry.